Hi everybody, my name is Jamie and I am the Board Game Man. Today, we're going to look at a game that's 50 years old, from 1970. It's a Hobbit-related game, and the name of the company is actually Hobbit Toys and Games, Inc. Um, it is a two-to-four player game, and it is a Middle-earth game for the entire family. It is called Conquest of the Ring. So let's head on over to the gamer's table, and I'll show you how to play. Hello everybody and here we are at the gamers table. Here is the board for Conquest of the Ring. Um, not too many components with it. Uh, here is the board. Uh, here are the four playing pieces that you see here. Nothing, uh, I wish the, the player's pieces could have been a little better. You know, these are just standard pieces you see in every game. It'd be kind of cool to have it like little hobby characters or something. That'd be pretty cool. But oh well, it is what it is. Uh, like I said, it was made back in 1970. So um, we also have one die and the ring. Doo -doo -doo. Here is the ring, which is placed in the middle square where it says ring. And as you can see here, the instructions are inside the lid, which is always nice. Very, very nicely done. It's it's pretty simple. And you can see that is all it is. So I, I do like when the instructions are in the lid. They're not paper instructions. I don't know if other versions are. Um, I don't know if there even is any versions of this game. Um, but yeah, so the instructions are in the lid. Now what you're trying to do is all players will choose a color that they want to do and you'll see the lettering underneath the little mushrooms here, the little mushroom homes um, have, you know, this is this is blue, this is red, this is green, this is yellow. So there's different colors. So we'll just say red goes here and uh, we'll say, we'll do a diagonally from each other and yellow will go here, okay? You roll one die. You know, my game came with two for some odd reason, but it, uh, everything says one die, so I think I might have had an extra die in this game. But anyhow, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to the ring, capture the ring, and bring it back to your home space. Now, you'll see the blue and blue and green, there's nothing, you know, it's just artwork. So you, each space does count as one spot, so you're not skipping over them or anything like that. The only thing you cannot go through are these black lines. These are walls. So you could tell it's a maze to try to get to the ring. Okay, that's what happens. So obviously in this game, whoever rolls highest goes first. Um, once you roll the die, say it's six, uh, you say you go one, let's see, I'll do it this way, that way you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. And you'll start making your way through the maze, uh, one, two, and so on, until one player starts going do do do, all of a sudden they make it to the ring. Now, in order to capture the ring, you need to roll in the ring space by exact count. So say red gets there, what you do is you put the ring around the player pawn, like so. And then the chase is on. Now, as soon as the player captures the ring, he does get one additional roll to get a little bit of a head start back to his home spot. So once he rolls and gets it, he's going to go ahead and roll again to get a little, hopefully get a good head start. Uh, one, two. Now, per turn, you are not allowed to go diagonally, so you can't cut a space like this. You can't go, oh, yay, I, I saved a space. There is no diagonally, and you cannot go over the same square twice in one turn. So say I went here and it's a dead end. I can't go, uh, you know, I can't roll a five. I can't go one, two, three, four, oops, five. I can't go to the same space in the same turn. So you got to make sure that you can, you're able to go, because whatever roll you roll, or whatever amount you roll, you must fulfill that entire roll, okay? So, now what happens is, as soon as, like I said, as soon as the player captures the ring, you're going to roll the die, get a head start, and uh, so that way we go here, and then the race is on. So say the yellow pawn is here, he's going to try to catch the red player, and so on. So say he goes a five, obviously he has to get him by exact roll. He's one, two, three, four away. So maybe he can go one, two, three, four, five, or he can go four, five, and so on. Now, what happens is if, say, you're still going for the ring, 
and two players land on the same space, okay? Uh, you are allowed to do that. Um, so there is no pushing everybody back to start. There is nothing like that. All it really is is just, uh, um, except for when you're carrying the ring. That's the only time that you cannot land on the same spot. If you're, say, the red player's here, the yellow player has the ring, okay? And say what happens is I land on an exact spot as the player. So say I went one, two, three. What would happen was I would take over this spot and I would move the other player one space any direction that I can without going through a wall. That's how that works. And like I said, if a player, the red player goes, rolls a two, captures the ring, he's going to take the ring, move this player one spot, and he gets to roll one more to get a head start. One, two, three, and so on. And as you can tell, the first player that actually gets back to their home spot, obviously by exact count, with the ring in hand, wins the game.